All right, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to be doing some destruction today, which is always fun uh, using in cloth. So it'll be a really cool tutorial, easy to do as always. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, let's go ahead and go to our polygon tab, and we can also do it here. But we'll just create a new polygon plane, and drag on the grid here to create this, and we'll just rotate it 90 degrees and Z to get it straight up. Move it over here. Uh, by the way, I had someone ask me this uh, the other day. If you can't see your channel box or your attribute editor, uh, it's just right up here. You can have these on, just channel box, and this is the attribute editor. Uh, also, uh, control A is your uh, hotkey for your attribute editor. So here we go. We have our polygon plane selected, and we're going to uh, create some more uh, geometry with this. So under our inputs in our polyplane 1, let's bump up our subdivision width to 30 and height to 30. And now we can also uh, create some cracks in our mesh and um, we'll do this by just selecting the cut faces tool and we can just start cutting a whole bunch of these faces in our mesh. It doesn't really matter where you put them, you can just do a whole bunch like I'm doing here randomly and the more you got the better it looks so there we go that looks pretty cool and what this will do is as our object breaks through the wall it'll have some cracking going through which makes it look a lot more realistic okay so let's go ahead and uh, right click and select edge and highlight all of our edges we're gonna go to edit mesh and then we're gonna go to detach and uh, I'll explain why we're doing all this here in a second. And then we'll go to uh, right click again, go to face, and we'll select all of our faces. And you can hit shift, right click to extrude the faces. Uh, you can also do it here under edit mesh, uh, extrude face. So we'll extrude this out. And this is to give some depth to our wall. So we have some 3D pieces. Uh, that way it's not just really flat. Um, so you want to make sure you do those two steps because that's what makes it have those 3D pieces. You want to uh, detach it and then also extrude it out. All right, so here we have our wall uh, pretty much set up and ready to go. Move it forward here. And now we're going to go ahead and create our uh, sphere, which is going to be the object that's going to be colliding with our wall to give it that explosion look. So we'll just go to uh, Polygon tab again and have our sphere here. And what we're going to do is we're going to animate this sphere. So we'll just select it, hit uh, S to set a keyframe on frame 1, then go to frame 30, pull it through our object here, and hit S again. And now you can see that it's going through our wall. And everything now is set up to go for simulation. So it looks good. Now what we got to do is just convert these two in cloth objects and we're pretty much good to go. So we'll go to our tabs up here and we'll just go down to in dynamics and we will go to in mesh with our wall selected. Go to in mesh and hit create in cloth. And then we'll also select our sphere and we'll go to in mesh, create passive collider. So we have our wall is the object that is the uh, has the in cloth information on it and all the sphere does is it's allowed to collide with this uh, in cloth information. So uh, let's go ahead and before we uh, play this back I'm going to make a quick change and you'll see why here in a second. So I have our wall selected and then we can go to our nucleus tab here. I'm going to turn our gravity down to zero and what that does is if we were to push play right now this wall would just fall straight down and probably would fall before our sphere even got there to hit it. So we want to have it at zero, that way our sphere hits it and the debris comes flying out uh, like crazy. So let's go ahead and uh, cache this out right now, because if we push play it might be too much for our computer to handle. When you start messing around with these type of simulations, um, depending on what type of computer you have, uh, it, it could either handle it or it couldn't, and then Maya could crash, or your computer could blow up or whatever, who knows. So, 
we'll go to in cache, we'll create a new cache, and this just uh, caches out the simulation, and then you can go back through and scrub through and it makes it a lot easier on your computer. So it's always a good idea to do that. So we see here, we interact with the wall, we got some sweet dispersion of our uh, objects there. Everything looks good. It's in 3D, as you can tell. It's big chunks. That's what we like. And um, this looks really sweet. I'm liking this simulation. The fun part about this is that every simulation is different. You can do this however many times you want and get different results. So I love working with dynamics and simulations. Let's take a look here. So, oh yeah, we got some sweet looking fractures all in through here. Um, you can see that's why we put those those fractures in there. This is just looking really cool. You can tell the walls breaking through. And now that we cached it out, we can go ahead and just scrub through like it's nothing. It doesn't harm our computer one bit. So you can see here our, our sphere breaks through and uh, pff, causes a huge hole in the wall and then the wall fractures. So this is a pretty simple technique, like I said, but it leaves some really cool results. The shatter effect, and uh, of course these pieces are just going everywhere. So, really cool. Alright, I'm going to show you some different uh, things you can do with the same technique. Uh, you know, obviously it's really simple to set up, but uh, I also wanted to show you some other things you could do with it. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and save this out for you guys. And you can uh, use it. I'm gonna call it wall destruction. I like the simulation, so I'll replace that. There you go. You can use this uh, however you want. And let me go ahead and open up this uh, brick wall destruction. Start. This will be available in the project files. Open that up, and uh, let me save that. So this here would be. Uh, more of like an actual brick wall instead of what we saw earlier which is kind of maybe like a, a sheetrock or something like that would have a lot of de debris in it this is more like a, a concrete block wall so the way I set this up is each one of these blocks are actually individual cubes like so and then you duplicate them and you move it over and then you duplicate it and move it over so on and so forth and then you duplicate these and you move them on top, you know. So, uh, spread them over. So you get the idea here, and that's how I built this wall. But then the trick is you want to, after you're all said and done, you want to select them, and you want to go ahead and combine these together. This button right here combines them. And that way, uh, whenever you create this as an in-cloth object, it's a lot easier on your computer and it makes it all uh, simulate together instead of individually. So that's basically how I have this set up. Of course, this is going to be available so you guys can follow right along. And this is all one object already been combined for you. We already have the animation here for you too. Same type of animation. All we'll do though is we'll just select this and we'll go ahead and just go to in-mesh, create in-cloth, and we'll create our sphere. and make that the passive collider. So for this example I'm not going to turn off the gravity like I did last time just so you can see what it does. So I'm going to leave the settings the same and we will just cache this out. And of course I'll replace this existing cache. Alright, so not exactly what we wanted. You can see here this is actually falling down like like we thought it was because the gravity is turned on. Then we got some really weird uh, like sticking together kind of like a snake, you know, not not cool. They're falling all the way down forever and ever and ever. So, real quick, let's make some changes here. Select our uh, wall, go to our attribute editor, and I'll just start by going to the nucleus node here. Um, I'm going to leave our gravity on, because I want to show you a different way to uh, have this effect, because a lot of times you're going to want this gravity to be on so the bricks fall down, they don't just float into space. So uh, we'll leave that on for now. But what I want to do is I want to click on this ground plane because right now you can see this is just falling forever and we want this to be able to interact with the floor. So if I turn on this ground use plane, it's going to uh, act like the grid is the floor and we're going to uh, see some interaction with that. 
make that change there. Also, you see that we have this stickiness here with our uh, bricks. And that has to do with the way that the collision is happening. And actually, it probably has to do with the way I built my wall because it's not very, it's not built built very well. You can see if I zoom in here, it's probably you see how it has some overlapping uh, bricks here, so they overlap, which makes it difficult for the simulation. It causes some problems. Um, you could build your own wall and build it better, but we'll we'll, we'll get by with it. What we can do though to help this is if we can change this from vertex face to vertex edge in our it's in our in cloth shape under collisions. Vertex edge should help get rid of some of that uh, stickiness. And uh, let's see what else we can do here. Um, I'm actually going to turn our gravity up, I think, because we're dealing with some bricks here. So let's change it up to a value of like 12. Go back to our in cloth shape. Um, and actually we could see how much collision we have here. So we'll go to our collision thickness and you can see how much this overlaps. You know, really bad. So that's why we're getting that weird simulation. Uh, same thing with the self collision overlapping quite a bit. But hey, it's all right. We'll deal with it. Um, let's take a look at our mass. We'll bump that up a little bit because we have uh, bricks. Drag, I'll turn down barely, and our lift, I'll turn up a little bit. And let's start with that. Let's see what that does. Uh, we want our bounce down. Friction, uh, you could bring that down, but I will leave it as it is right now. And you can notice that none of these changes are actually happening. It's because we have to go ahead and uh, recache it back out. Let's do that now, and let's see what it looks like. So a new cache. Uh, in cache, create new cache, and we'll replace what we got. Hey, that looks way better, doesn't it? So we got this, actually not a bad simulation at all. Uh, this is busting through, the bricks are going flying, but they still maintain the gravity so they don't go too far. You see it's colliding with this floor here, but we notice that this, this is actually, once it hits the floor, this cube here is on the floor, but it's spinning for a long time. And that has to do with that friction I was talking about. So we might want to turn that friction up a little bit so that way it doesn't slide because these are bricks we're talking about, concrete blocks. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that. Also, you notice that when we push play, that gravity is still happening before we even collide with the wall. So we're going to need to fix that as well. So. I'm going to go back in to our attribute editor with our wall selected. I'm going to turn up this friction amount just to value of 0.2. I'll double it. Then I'm going to go to our channel box with our wall selected. Scroll down to our in cloth shape. And you can see this tab here. It's called is dynamic. And this is saying does it have those in cloth properties or not? Is it paying attention to what's going on with our in cloth shape and our nucleus and all that? Or is it not? Um, there's a couple different ways you can solve this problem. This is what I found to be the best. You can go in here and you can also, you know, keyframe animate the gravity on and off. Uh, but I like the way that this works better. So what I'll do is I'll scroll here until I see that, that the sphere is going to interact with the wall. Looks like frame 12. So on frame 12, I'll make sure this is at set to zero, which is off. I'll right click on is dynamic and I'll key the selected. Then I'll go forward one frame to frame 13, hit 1, which brings it on, and right click and hey, say uh, key selected. So now our dynamic or our wall is not dynamic all the way up until frame 12. Then it becomes dynamic, and that's exactly this time that our sphere will interact with it. Now, of course, we need to go ahead and recache this out to see any changes, so we'll create a new cache as well. And boom, there we go. Now this guy is going kind of crazy. We can fix that. Let's see here. See our wall doesn't fall down right away. And it waits till it gets interacted with the sphere in order for anything to happen. And there we go. Uh, obviously we have some problems here with this collision happening here. This is where you're going to 
have those uh, the way the wall is built that's the problem with that um, again you can build a better wall but we can also go in here and change these settings around a little bit and make it more explosive so when this bursts through the wall all these bricks kind of come flying and uh, that would you know hide that as well so if I was gonna tweak this anymore I'd probably turn up that friction amount quite a bit um, more you know 0.5 oh, not 5 0.5 I would also uh, I might turn on our uh, mass a little bit bring our drag and lift up and then probably leave these the same yeah you don't want any of those air things I'd probably do something like that I mean I don't know but this isn't bad I like the way this is coming that looks a little bit better looks more like a brick wall so we have more of an explosive force you know but uh, the uh, bricks look heavier so hey not bad go ahead and save this so you guys can use it as our brick wall destruction and alright I want to show you one more technique real quick um, and then uh, that'll be all for this tutorial so I'll open up another scene this will be our building destruction start and uh, again this will be available so I have a very similar scene set up here except you can see we have kinda like a building it's a polygon cube and it just got some uh, subdivision changes here 30 by 30 by 20 um, and it's also animated to go through the building the reason why this is a little bit different is because um, with the first one we had some depth to it with the second one it was a giant brick wall this one when you're doing destruction with buildings it's a little bit different because normally uh, you're expecting that the building is going to have some things inside of it so let's say that you were setting up a scene where you wanted an asteroid to collide with a building or a transformer or something like that and the building gets to, you know destroyed you're gonna want to see a lot of different uh, debris in the air and so the way we're gonna set this up is gonna be a little bit different and normally with these type of effects they're a lot always hidden uh, by dust or smoke um, so you can get away with uh, some of these um, pieces that are really thin and I'll show you what I mean when I say that so we're gonna do the same technique we'll select this we'll go to in dynamics create a new in cloth and we'll select our sphere and create a passive collider I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn the gravity off for this one since you guys kinda already know uh, how to change that around if you want to in our channel editor uh, remember it's just right here in the dynamic if you want to mess with that uh, I'm going to go ahead and cache this out real quick and just see what we get so with the way we have this set up you can notice that this just looks like a giant sheet and um, that's not what we want <laughs> uh, this is supposed to be a building not a uh, piece of cloth so uh, we need to actually detach uh, these pieces together which apparently I didn't do to set up the scene file so I'm gonna undo all this and we don't want our uh, sphere here or our cube here to be dynamic right now so I will go to our surfaces or our polygons select our edge and uh, you want to detach all of these here and there we go now they're separated out and they'll each have individual pieces if we go back here and set it all up again create new in cloth uh, create passive collider and then turn our gravity off let's try that let's see if that made a difference and we will just cache this out so now when this interacts it should just blow up everything yeah there we go and that's looking pretty good I'm gonna go ahead and stop it right there and you can see the difference you can see that uh, instead of having giant cubes you have a lot of thin 
pieces. And of course, we can increase this resolution. Uh, right now, it's only set to 30. You can make it 50 or 100 or whatever you think your computer can handle. Uh, but make sure you do that before you create the end cloth simulation because once you have it created, this object is actually just a duplicate of your mesh. So, uh, we can scroll through here. So, you see, this is an asteroid colliding with our building. We got some sweet effects as if this was more glass on the windows or something. Um, but uh, you can see we had this kind of far away. You can you can get away with some of this not being thick and just being uh, thinner pieces of uh, geometry here. Some really cool effects. If we let this play last even more, it'll probably collapse all the way down. But I wanted to show you this technique because uh, if you increase this uh, resolution here, it gets really cool. And I think I had some of the pictures in the previews actually um, that show it with a higher resolution. So you can get some really sweet debris going everywhere. And uh, if you add some uh, cutting as well as we did with the first example, right now this is just the building playing by itself. But if you cut it up, uh, you can do that with the box as well. It will uh, also add to that cracking and make it look a lot better. So anyway, we have three different techniques now, all using the same type of uh, dynamic simulation that you guys can play around with. Mess around with these settings. Uh, that's what makes all the difference in the world. This mass, lift, drag. Um, also, uh, the bounce, friction, and stickiness. The bounce, you know, once it hits the ground, what's it going to do? Is it going to bounce? Is it going to, you know, stay? Is it going to slide? Um, what's going to happen? So... Yeah, hopefully you guys learned some stuff from this tutorial. Again, we really appreciate your feedback. Uh, feel free to leave any comments or uh, contact us uh, with uh, some ideas you guys have or any uh, complaints, you know, whatever it is. So, all right, thanks a lot, guys, for uh, watching this tutorial, and we will see you on the next one.